Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh, thanks for joining me. Today we've got a really, really important video. A former Meta executive whistleblower testifies on the dangers of social media, youth, and mental health. Now, this sort of goes hand in hand with what we're talking about. We're talking about the dangers of kids on the internet. Now, I talk about the exploitation of kids, but we also have to tie into the danger for kids specifically. And this guy tells it how it is, and you should all listen. This is a really important testimony in front of the Senate Judiciary. So we've got some timestamps that we're gonna go through and we're gonna watch it together and we're gonna comment on it. And you can find this on C-SPAN. Next, a former consultant and engineering director for Facebook parent company Meta, Arturo Behar. He testified about the impact the company has had on children. He shares data with lawmakers showing one in eight children received unwanted sexual advances. One in eight children, one in eight. And I almost believe, I'd say 100% of family vloggers and famous children, kid influencers, get inappropriate stuff. 100%. There's not one that doesn't. And the scariest part about this is the parents won't ever tell you those comments and DMs that they're getting on their kids' accounts. Because if they ever told you, they would have to shut down their accounts. What would you do? Like Anybody out there who didn't understand the dangers of putting the kids on the internet, have you ever received something like that in your account or on a comment? What did it make you feel like? Because these family vloggers and these influencers who put their kids on the internet, they don't delete those comments. They know that they exist and they just don't care. Isn't that the craziest thing? And so this is where we're headed and I'm glad we are. On Meta's Instagram platform, within a seven day period, without any steps being taken by the company to address the issue. Meta, you sons of bitches. The hearing is just- And this isn't just Meta. And don't forget Meta owns Facebook, Instagram, uh, owns the Meta platform, which is like the Oculus and everything else. Look, it's a good, Overall, I think social media is a great thing for adults, okay? If you can use it responsibly, if you're not addicted to it, but it's a good place to connect. It's it, it, it overall, it overwhelmingly at the beginning of it was a good thing and people thought it was good. I think the, the whole sentiment is shifting. Social media in general has become a stain on society, on humanity, and it's actually taken us backwards as much as, as much as it is a future thing. It's taken us backwards and it is crazy. And so... I say all this to say that I'm, a, I'm an avid user of social media. I make my living on social media and I understand it. But I also th I also believe that there's a, a, a place where these executives and these people own these companies, they have a responsibility to guard children, uh, to, to bar children from their platform because it's just better safe than sorry. I've said it a million times. These platforms have no qualms with knocking out someone that doesn't agree with them politically. Okay, no qualms at all. Bye, see you later, we like you. But they're cool with child exploitation. It's, it's, it never, ever ceases to amaze me. Just over two hours. Okay, so let's skip to the first one. It's uh, 3.30. Meta ignoring statistics and evidence of abuse. So I'm gonna skip to 3.30. Sorry, guys. They ignored and disregarded recommendations for making the site safer, and they even rolled back some of the existing protection. Now, Mr. Behar is not the first or the only whistleblower to come forward. We heard from Francis Haugen, who showed that Facebook's own researchers described Instagram itself as a, quote, perfect storm, end quote, yep. and that it, quote, exacerbates downward spirals of addiction. I cannot say that word either. Exacerbate. Exacerbate? How do you say it? I have, in my life, exacerbate. I can't say it. Eating disorders and <clears throat> depression. Sad. Mr. Behar is the first to show in documents, not just in his recollection, but in documents, how he warned the top management of Facebook and Instagram of the ongoing harms their products were causing. Now, I know this is going to get dry, and to some people this is boring, and so I'm going to really try my best to cut out parts that you really don't need to hear and make it so that we get to the, the crux of it, to the to the meat of the whole thing. But, like, I need you to understand what's happening. This is a whistleblower who warned Meta of these things, and Meta ignored it. That's a really, really important thing here, because this is exactly what's happening to these children on social media platforms. There is, like, Alison Stoner was in front of, I'm not sure which one in Ohio, she's in front of the Capitol in Ohio somewhere, talking about the dangers of, like, these kids on the internet. 
And they're trying to pass a law that's like, well, if when a kid turns 18, maybe they can ask to get their stuff taken down. That doesn't, that's too late, man. Like, I love that you're working. I love that we're starting something. That's too late. These kids have already had their whole lives shared by the time they're 18. <laughs> What's that going to do? So I love that people are working hard. I love it. And I know it's changing. It's just so frustrating that you have to start with like little things. You're like, eh, no, just freaking hammer it. When it comes to the protection of children, use the hammer. We're going to present those documents for the record. And they show, for example, that over a quarter of young teens, 13 to 15 years old, report re receiving sexual advice. Dances on Instagram. Yep. Nearly a third of young teens. I'd like to point this out. We live in an age of technology, and these people are still printing out on like poster board things. Just put an overlay. Just give it to the production crew that work here. And be like, here's the overlay we want you to put over when we're talking about this. Ugh. I've seen discrimination based on gender, religion, race, and sexual orientation. A quarter of young teens report having been bullied or threaten, and nearly a quarter of young teens report experiencing feeling worse about themselves, about their bodies, and their social relationship. And that's just not kids, too. That's kids and it's adults, by the way. I talk about this a lot on my platform, especially when it comes to mommy vloggers and women who watch them who try to achieve that perfection when it doesn't exist. That's one of the scariest parts about this whole family vlogging world, okay? They are showing you something that is impossible to achieve. Okay, it just doesn't exist. And it sets people up for failure and it sets people up for mental illness and it sets people up for like feeling that they're not good enough. And that I know that's everybody's responsibility for how they feel. I understand that, right? But if you are inundated by it day after day by these perfect families with the kids like Breckenleys and Zachablees and all these things and how and all the beige colors and how perfect their house is and that their kids are blanket trained and look I feed my kids this grape and all this stuff and you're like well I don't do that stuff so I'm I'm not I'm not as good I will never understand why people continue to watch this stuff and it makes you feel bad but that's the world we are in that's the world we're in okay we're addicted to social media it's almost impossible to stop unless there's like you know unless it's we're forced on us I think if the world were forced like all power went out for like a year or something. Humanity would correct itself. I mean, as long as it wasn't like apocalyptic events happening, you know what I'm saying? But if it was just like, well, you know, that social media all collapsed in one day and we didn't have it, I think humanity would be better off. And I and that's I'm saying that as someone who makes my living on the internet, okay? Um, so I'm uh, sorry. Just side notes. The type of experience that lead to serious depression and eating disorders. And when users reported harmful content to Facebook, it took action only 2% of the time. Yeah, there's so much to uncover here. This is gonna have to be multi-part series. This is exactly it. How many times have I asked you guys to go report a nude baby on Instagram or something like that, or we record a nudity or a breastfeeding, all the stuff that just doesn't need to be on there, right? And almost all of the time, almost all the time, unless it's super egregious, Meta takes no movements to change it at all. Now, TikTok might be a little bit better, but I don't even think so. I know that YouTube is pretty good for that. They're like, they'll take that down like right away. But Meta doesn't care. And it's very telling that Meta doesn't care. 2% of people who are, who, are, who are complaining about like naked children and everything else, 2%? That's it. That's crazy. Like, I want to see 10, 15% at minimum. There's a history here. Uh, in August of 2021, Senator Blackburn and I wrote to Facebook about the impact of their products on kids. We asked, quote, has Facebook research ever found that its platforms and products can have a negative effect on children's and teens' mental health or well-being? Facebook refused to answer. Of course they did. Why would they answer that? on a weekly basis, around 7% of Facebook users overall encounter content promoting suicide and self-harm with 13 to 15 year old seeing it more often than others. That's the algorithm. Can you hear that for a second? Now, don't ever miss what he just said there. Please don't miss this. There's so much content about self-harm and suicide on Facebook and Instagram. And it, it, the algorithm is feeding it to children more than others. Where is the outrage? Where are like, because people don't watch this. That's why it's, it's mainstream media needs to cover this. Famous people need to platform this type of stuff. Did you know that 
Meta and Facebook, this then you know, have this type of content and is being fed specifically to this percentage of youth. Why is that happening? This is this is absolutely crazy that this is happening and no one seems to know about it. And that's exactly what Meta wants. There's a pattern here with Facebook. It hides risks by saying things like bullying and harassment is only 0.08% of content. When in reality, <laughs> where are you getting that number? The meta executives know that 11% of those 13 to 15 year olds face bullying every single week, every single week on Instagram. <clears throat> and just to be absolutely clear, that's millions of children and teenagers. It's not Millions. just a number. Behind every one of those numbers is a real person, a teenager. And there's a big talk going around now about like kids and their autonomy and transgenderism and everything else in schools and how it's like, if it could save one kid, let them do it. And then, you know, which, whichever side of the argument you, you, you fall on, okay? That is an argument often used by lots of people. Like, if it could save one life, let's do it, right? And I think even social media platforms would platform that type of idea. Except when it comes to this type of stuff. If it could save one life, we don't care. It could literally save millions of lives, and they don't seem to care. That's crazy to me. And for saying that, you could get booted off these platforms. We can no longer rely on social media's mantra, trust us. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to skip it up a bit, 904. This June... The Wall Street Journal found that Instagram was hosting open markets for child abuse material, even recommending pedophiles to each other. Young teens were being extorted and coerced into sexual acts. Instagram was complicit. Yes. And remember back in the day, we did a video on predator playlists. This is when YouTube initially took off the comments from any content, including children, even though if it wasn't YouTube kids content, they took it off. They put it back since because they just didn't give a crap. They just they don't care. Right. They were tagging moments and videos because you can tag timestamps in the comments and you click it and go right to that. You could still do it to this day. So you could tag a timestamp in the comment section and it'll go to a place. People were finding that when you would click on those videos on those timestamps, Right, it would go to the video of the kid in a bathing suit or in a diaper getting changed, potty training, swimming, dentist, mouth open, things like that. It was always inappropriate, leotard doing splits, stuff like that. Right, when YouTube took the comments away because they're like, "Well, this is crazy. We shouldn't let pedophiles do this," which they brought it back. But when they did that, a predator playlist started emerging. So these guys, and we uncovered it. It's crazy. These guys would have these channels, and they would have like 80, 100, 200 followers. No content posts on their channels, but they would have playlists that they curated that was all just like kids in bathing suits, kids swimming, kids at the dentist, kids in diapers. That's all it was. Just predator playlist after playlist. So predators are going to find a way, right? And so why would you give them easy access to your children? Why make it easier for them? I'm just going to remind my colleagues that we've heard from young people as well as parents about these harms. And one of them told me... How many more children have to die before Congress will do something? That's why we're here today. A vital topic, and to be honest with you, this hearing concerns, I think, every parent's nightmare. And I see you're nodding, Mr. Bayer. You're a father. That, that uh, subject composes, that reality composes some of your testimony. I'm also a father of three. And what you have brought to this committee today is something that every parent in America needs to hear. The numbers are really stunning. Listen, one listen. Four Teenagers, minor children will experience sexual solicitation on Meta's platforms at some point. One in eight say that they have experienced unwanted sexual advances. We're talking about children now. These are not adults. Children. I, and I got to reiterate, I know I'm interrupting him, but guys, why are you letting your children on social media? Out the people who are out there right now who, who follow me, who, who know that this is wrong and dangerous and everything else. But on the other end, we'll give your kid a tablet. We'll let them be on social media, YouTube kids, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Why are you letting your kids even look at anything on there? And those ones who let their kids post on social media, like TikToks and stuff like that, you got to stop. Like, I'm not trying to shame you. I'm sort of trying to shame you. You got to stop that. Okay. I'm even, I'm just saying kids who just look at it. Because the algorithm, when it, because kids will find what they're looking for, and then the algorithm will feed it to them, force feed it into their brains. So why are you letting your kids unfettered access on the internet? Okay, yes, my kids have their iPads, they have their devices. 
but I know everything that they're doing at all times and they will never be on social media. I promise that. I don't care how old my daughter gets to the point where it's like, oh, my friends have it. I don't care if all your friends have it. I love you. So that's why you're not going to do it. And she's going to, if she says something like, well, what if my, did my friend, my, do my friend's parents not love them? I'm like, not in this way, I guess. They don't want to protect them because my daughter knows the danger of social media because I know the danger of social media. You guys need to have conversations with your children about the dangers of social media. I have a video on here about the dangers of social media for kids. Okay. It's meant to scare the crap out of them because that, that works. Okay. You need to talk to your kids about why they shouldn't be on social media. It never should just be like, you're not because I said so. Don't say that. Don't say because I said so. Say it because it's absolutely dangerous and I want to protect you. It's my job to protect you. I love you. And I don't want to see you go down that path because one in four kids who are on social media right now are in a lot of danger. One in four. And I don't want to see you in danger because I love you. Don't ever say to your kids because I said so. Okay, that's stupid. Give them an explanation as to why they can understand it, right? Into, into their age category. And children who are under the age of 13 shouldn't be on there anyway. There's rules. But obviously, Instagram doesn't give a crap. Facebook, Meta, YouTube, they don't care who's watching it. But don't let your kids on social media, everybody. You know it's wrong. Children have experienced unwanted sexual advances just in the last week, within the last seven days. And of course, we know from Meta's own internal research that they knew the extent of this problem, yep. even as they were ignoring you. And I want to turn to some of that research that Senator Blumenthal just referenced. Here's what Meta, these are Meta's own words from their own internal research on the effect of their own product on children, particularly young women. Quote, we make body image issues worse for one in three teen girls. This is Meta saying it, everybody, not the world. This is Meta's own internal research. I know it's really dry and some, and I have ADHD and sometimes it's hard for me to follow along, but this is their own internal research that they know exists. They all know that this, they all know that having children on platform is dangerous. And so when you do mom ran account on Instagram or parent ran account, they know that that's dangerous. They don't care. They just don't care, everybody. That's the problem. Quote, teens blame Instagram for increases in the rate of anxiety and depression. This reaction was unprompted and consistent across all groups. Quote, teens told us they don't like the amount of time they spend on the app, but they feel they have to be present. They often feel addicted and know that what they're seeing is bad for their mental health, but feel unable to stop themselves. This is the reality that Meta and Instagram, Facebook, they knew these things were happening. These quotes are years old that I just read. You pointed this out to them too, Mr. Behar, and still they did nothing. In fact, they did worse than nothing. What your testimony shows is when you brought these concerns to them, when you exposed this reality, rather than respond, they cooked the books, if I understand your testimony correctly. They started telling the public, yep. including Congress, and of course every parent in America, that, oh, we, we get 90% of unwanted sexual material, child sex abuse material, pornography, uh, terrorism threats. We, we take it down. Our, our AI systems find it and take it down. But what no, they don't. you expose is, in fact, those AI systems are catching only a small, small percentage of that kind of abusive material online. So when Facebook is out there... Prom and it's crazy because the AI system works on YouTube, too. If I were to say the, the pedo word, whatever, the full word... The AI chat, the AI bot catches it and flags my video. Uh, a lot of true crime channels, if you're talking about murder and kids things, it catches all that stuff, right? But it's not catching visuals of children swimming or getting their diaper change or children's nudity or anything. And even when it's fully reported by a person, the, the whatever system it goes through, still not catching it. It doesn't catch it. It only catches what the algorithm is taught to catch. And if it's political rhetoric, catch it, right? Oh, it can't talk about that. Catch it. Like it's really 100% effective on the things it doesn't want you to talk about. But it is so telling that it's 2% effective on the things that it should be 100% effective in, right? 100% effective in the things it doesn't want you to talk about, 2% effective in the things that should be effective. Is that making sense to you? Like it should be 100% effective when it comes to child exploitation, and it's 2%. Promoting to the world that's on purpose taking down the vast majority it's simply not true and in fact they know it's not true and that statistic is designed to mislead they are deliberately misleading parents about what's on their platform they are deliberately misleading parents about the safety of their children online 
And I just want to echo something that Senator Blumenthal has said. It is time for Congress to take action. It was time years ago for Congress to take action. It is, it is an indictment of this body, to be honest with you, that we have not acted. And we all know the reason why. If I could just start with a little plain talk here this morning. We know the reason why. Big Tech is the biggest, most powerful lobby in the United States Congress. They spend millions upon millions upon millions of dollars every year to lobby this body. Lobbying should be illegal. Sorry. It should be, like, finished. No more lobbying. Guys, I don't understand, and it's it's in my country too. The government works for the people. I know this is such a simplified version of saying this, and I cannot believe that this common sense is always ignored. The government works for people. Me, regular, regos, not corporations. Corporate, I mean, sort of to a degree, right? Corporations pay their taxes and everything else. But it's it serves the body as a whole, okay? And there are way more people than there are corporations, okay? There are way more people than special interests, tech companies, everything else. And it's supposed to serve the people to be best for the people. So when the richest of those people and corporations can hire people to literally bribe politicians to change laws and do things that they want, it is no longer democracy. Okay, it's not. It, 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 we've not lived in a democracy since since lobbying became a massive thing, which I don't know, maybe it should, I don't know when it was. But it's it's um, it's relatively a modern thing. I mean, not, I mean, as long as politics have been around, it's been there in different ways. But this is literally legal to do. And it subverts democracy because the richest of the people and companies and corporations can spend the most to sway political opinion. A rego like me, a pleb, can't do that. I, ca I can write a letter to my MP or you can write a letter to your whatever. It's not going to do anything. But these people will hire firms to be like, we need this to change. Here's $10 million, go change it. And it gets changed. That is crazy. Why has no politician ever been like, you know what? No more lobbying. And I know people are going to say, well, there are great lobbies out there. There are people who are lobbying for this and that and the other thing, right? There are good lobbies who are lobbying for laws because that's how laws are made, which is crazy. It should be stopped. That's not how laws should be made. It should be made by the vote of the people. Okay. Does the majority want this law to be in place? It's in place, right? It's not. Laws are created by people who are, in, who are fallible. And they are also created by people who have lots of money who can bribe politicians to create those laws. I cannot believe lobbying is legal. I, to me, and maybe I'm, it's a simplified version and maybe I'm not fully understanding it all, but it's to me, I just can't believe it. And the truth is, as every reporter in this room knows, and I hope you'll report it after this hearing, they do it successfully. Mm -hmm. They successfully shut down every meaningful piece of legislation every year. I've only been here for four years and I have seen it repeatedly. And this guy for president. Josh Hawley for president. The short time I have been here. Yeah. We'll get all kinds of speeches this guy knows. on the committee. We'll get speeches on the floor about how we have to act. And then this body will do nothing. Why? Money. That's why. Mm -hmm. Gobs of it. Gobs of it. Billions of it. Influencing votes. A hammer hold on this process. It is time for it to be broken. And the only way I know to break it is to bring the truth forward. And that's why we are so glad, Mr. Behar, that you are here today to do it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Hawley. The only footnote I would add is this time must be different. They have armies of lawyers and lobbyists. They spend tons of money, but this time okay, must camera be guy. different. That's weird. Senator Urban. Okay. There's a lot here, and we are not even... We are 14 minutes into a two-hour video, so I'm just going to continue on as much as possible. I I, I, just, I know that these super long videos, they don't get super watched, but man, I really want you guys to watch this because this is so important. So I'll try to skip a little bit more. So the bottom line is a society that cannot take care of its children or refuses to has a bleak future. So thank you for doing this. There's a quote. Perfect quote. A society who can't take care of its children, they don't have a future. They don't. And it's a future that's really dangerous. We used to take care of our kids, right? Social media has made it so that money can be made from your children and people have capitalized on making money from their children and they won't stop. doesn't matter how dangerous it is. And those who have changed, those are the good parents. Those are the ones who's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know it existed. I found it existed and I stopped. Those who continue on this path forward, exploiting the children, knowing how dangerous it is, those are the worst type of people. And that's why I roast them, everybody. Some people get upset with me for making fun of people's hands and neck skin and thumbs and grossness and everything else. But I'm man, I, I could just be so much worse because they deserve it. Listen to me again. 
These people know the dangers. They have seen it firsthand, probably sometimes in real life, if not especially in the DMs and comment sections about their children. They know predators are watching. They know predators are getting off on their content. They know they're stealing the content and turning it into different stuff. And do nothing about it except continue it. These are the types of people that don't deserve to be here. They should be in jail. This is not so you do not belong in our society if you do not protect the most vulnerable of us. Okay? That's one of the main reasons I do what I do in this channel. These people are disgusting. And I am so sick of hearing like, hey, you can come after them, but their looks. Look, I do it with snark. I do it with comedy. I do it with seriousness. And it seems to be working. Okay, so yes, I'm going to continue to make fun of people's looks. Yes, I know I'm a potato doing that. Okay, I understand that. Everybody, it's so funny to me when people are like, how is this guy making fun of people? Has he seen what he looks like? So they're going to say, <laughs> it's, they don't see the irony in that. Do you know what I'm saying? It's great. I understand that I'm not much to look at. I get it. But it's not going to stop me. Okay? These people deserve it. And if you still to this day can't see past that, that these people are some of the worst monsters in our society, that's a you problem. Get your head checked. With children, it was like the floodgates opened. Mm -hmm. And we started hearing from moms and dads. Can I ask a question? Why is it only Republicans? I'm seeing R right next to her name. That means Republican. Why is it only Republicans are behind this thing. Is there any Democrats on board for the protection of children? Why am I only seeing Republicans in this? And this should be a bipartisan issue across the board. And I don't understand why it's always Republicans going to bat for kids. This is a no brainer for everybody. You know what it is? Because polit politics are so divisive and more so than it ever has ever been before. Okay. That even if they take on a good thing, the Democrats cannot be seen to be working with them. Vice versa. If Democrats take on a good thing, Republicans cannot be seen to be working with them. We are lost and our children are suffering because of it. Not only in Tennessee and not only in Connecticut, but across the country who were saying, can I please tell you my story? The reason they did this is because their hearts were breaking. Their children had committed suicide. Their children had met a drug dealer. Their children had met a pedophile. Online, by the way, TikTok, Instagram, all these places. A lot of drugs are sold here, like child trafficking as well. Their child had met a sex trafficker. They had been exposed to cyberbullying and had committed suicide. They were looking up ways to commit suicide. See, there are laws in the physical world that protect children from all of this. But online, it has been the Wild West. And as my colleagues have said, we have fought this army of lobbyists for years. And it's, it cannot be lost on you. It's true. There are so many laws in the physical world for children, but none online. Right? And it's coming. Thank God. But that's so telling because the modern way we get out messages is through online platforms. And thank the Lord on high that Elon Musk purchased X because there is no way a lot of these messages will get out because the way they get out is through these platforms that they are accusing of what they're doing. You think a platform is going to allow this to be fed into the algorithm? You think this video is going to be fed into the algorithm? It's not. Okay. But it doesn't stop me from doing what I have. To, I, it's not going to stop me from saying what needs to be said and exposing what needs to be exposed. Like this has to change. And th again, I say that Twitter X has been released for freedom of speech it is going to be the only place eventually where you're going to be able to see all this stuff it, it's that's the reality we live in guys and that is should be scare the shit out of everybody big tech has proven they are completely incapable mm. of governing themselves yes the, i know what she's saying incapable they are capable of governing themselves they do not want to like i understand what she's saying now of setting up rules of having guidelines, of designing for safety. Mm -hmm. And it is so important that we move forward with this. The longer they're online, the richer that data is. The ri yeah. We, we rarely... Th Senator Marsha Blackburn here? Correct. The longer your kids are online too, the more, the more impressive their footprint is, the more money the social platform makes off the data from that child. 
we are targeted at advertisers as people who didn't grow up on the internet, right? From the age of like, I guess when I was grade nine, the internet became kind of ICQ, MSN, all those things were kind of happening. They weren't collecting data at that point, not to the degree they are now. Like we're not as valuable to social media companies as our children are. Take it away from them. There needs to be this massive movement of parents not allowing their kids on social media ever. The kid turns 18, do what you gotta do. When my kid turned 18, it's like, you know what? You're an adult now. I hope we helped. I hope we raised you right to make good decisions. Be on your way and make good decisions or make bad decisions. Whatever you're going to do, we love you, but we hope that we prepared you and we, we equipped you to make good life choices. Okay? Social media should be one of those things like drinking, like smoking, like doing drugs, like any of those things. Okay? It should be like, look, some parents don't care. The cool mom from Mean Girls. I'm the cool mom. You guys can drink here. There are parents like that who exist right now. There are parents also who will put their kids and force their kids to be online and make money on them. And then there are parents who don't truly know. Okay, but it should be that thing where it's like, look, not to your 18. I kid you not. And a lot of people would be like, oh, that's stupid. Do you think it would be, here's, the, all you have to do is answer this question. Do you think we'd be better off if our children were not exposed to social media until they're 18 or would we be worse off? And some people will argue, well, you know, you gotta be sufficient in technology. No, you don't. No, you don't. Okay, and I understand that everybody lives online right now. But I'm, compl I'm just talking about social media. I'm talking about social media as a drug because it is a drug. And it should be mitigated until the point where you are legally sort of okay. Like if you're able to el eligible for the military at 18, then same thing for social media. I'm not kidding. And I know that sounds crazy to a lot of people. I know it does, but I don't care. It's very, very important to get our kids off social media. The richer the data is, the more money they make. So they have monetized what comes from our children being addicted to social media. Yeah, and then I'm gonna to skip to his daughter. He ties the story about his daughter. This is unacceptable, and my work has shown that it doesn't need to be this way. Starting in 2009, I was the engineering and product leader for Facebook's efforts to reduce online threats to both children and adults. <laughs> and it's so funny because they will put these things in place and then they just expect people when they report it, they'll just take the data and be like, hey, thanks, they don't do anything about it. That's the craziest part about this is that Facebook and Meta and Instagram and all these places and YouTube and all, have these things in place yet do nothing about it. Why hire them? Because they need to show people, well, look, we are, we're taking all these steps, but they don't, they don't. They just throw money at it and don't do anything about it because they collect money. So this guy's salary and probably hundreds of thousands of dollars totally doesn't offset the billions of dollars they make off children, so they don't give a crap. But when they whistle blow, that's what really matters. Like eventually someone's going to whistleblow on something that's going to be way bigger than this, going to be a bigger smoking gun than this. And we're here for it. I met regularly with senior executives, including Mark Zuckerberg. And they were supportive of this work. <laughs> As a parent, were they? I took the work personally. And I worked hard to help create a safer environment. By the time I left in 2015, I felt the work was going in the right direction. A few years later, my 14-year-old daughter joined Instagram. She and her friends began having awful experiences. I have to say this about Arturo, and I'm so glad he's doing this, but Arturo, after knowing what you know and having such an inside look and how the sausage is made and how it's dangerous, why would you let your 14-year-old on Instagram? I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling here. Now, a lot of these guys are like, look, I know how it's like, so I can prepare your kid. And I guess there's to a degree, if you want your kid to be on social media, which you shouldn't, but if you do, I kind of understand that you should have these conversations first. Look, you're going to get unwanted advancements from men on your, in your Instagram. People are going to send you pictures that you'll never be able to unsee. Okay. Men will be like, do you really want to have that conversation? I mean, you should anyway. But like, um, this is where we live right now. This is the world we live in where you have to tell your child that if you're on social media, you're going to get dick pics in your inbox from grown men. A lot of these social media influencer kids, they, they get way more than that. Okay. They get stalked online and in real life and they all, it all, all the stories all eventually come out. Okay. The boys are catfished by women who will trick them in, into a, you know online relationship send nudes and everything else, and then they will blackmail these kids, try to ruin their life by saying, I'm going to leak these nudes if you don't give me this and that. And that happens, we don't even know about it because they will never tell you that. It happens. And it is so scary 
Doherty doesn't just, oh yeah, James, it happens to him all the time. <laughs> Laugh it off. Crazy pieces that happened to their son like th twice, three times now. To the point where this guy's his life is almost ruined because he's been evicted and he's like gone through relationships because they are targets of people who are predatory, even if they're the same age. They want you because you're famous. They don't know you. Because the you that you show on the internet is not the real you. <sighs> Man, it's so scary for these kids. Including repeated unwanted sexual advances, harassment. She reported these incidents to the company and it did nothing. In large part because of what I learned as her father in October of 2019, I returned to Facebook, this time as a consultant with Instagram's well-being team. We tried to set goals based on the experiences of teens themselves. Instead, the company wanted to focus on enforcing its own narrowly defined policies, yep. regardless of whether that approach reduced the harm that teens were experiencing. I discovered Don't mess with their money. You don't want to mess with their money, dude. That most of the tools for kids that we had put in place during my earlier time at Facebook had been removed. Yep. I observed new features being developed in response to public outcry, which were in reality kind of a placebo, a safety feature in name only mm -hmm. to placate the press and regulators. Yes, this every company that's ever done something dangerous to the world, tobacco, alcohol, drugs, all of them, they have placebo. That's, that's the best way to put this, placebo departments. They're like, look, we are putting money behind it and we're working on it and everybody feels safer because they told you. But why would you ever trust a corporation ever about anything ever? They are only out for themselves. They are not there for the protection of your children. They're not. It's your responsibility to protect your child. But now, but because parents aren't going to do that, then it is on these places. The next step is for these places to be like, look, if you're not going to protect them, I guess we're going to have to step in and we're going to have to do this because you guys are assholes. Okay? They have these placebo execs and placebo departments that, that pretend to do something and those departments likely think that they are doing something. But it's just money being thrown at them because there's public pressure or political pressure to do it. But they will never use it. They won't because they would have already. We know the data. We've seen it all. Many whistleblowers have come forward and talked about this already. We know it hurts our youth. It hurts us. We know it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Is there any doubt in anybody's mind that social media is damaging to people? And yet nothing is done ever. I'm claw handing. That's how mad I am. I say this because rather than being based on user experience data, they were based on very deliberately narrow definitions of harm. The company was creating its own homework. Yep. For example, Instagram They're, knows when a kid... Don't miss that. The companies were grading their own homework and saying, we investigated ourselves and we have decided, we have found that we are not guilty of anything. That's what that's what it's giving. Okay? <laughs> it's, they were grading their own homework. Brilliant way of saying it. Significant amount of time looking at harmful content. Content that they are recommending. Meta must be held accountable for their recommendations and for the unwanted sexual advances that Instagram enables. Yep. As soon as I understood this gap, I did what I had always done. I researched the problem, vetted the numbers, and informed Mark Zuckerberg, Sheryl Sandberg, and other executives. I gotta say this. These are the most powerful people in the world that run these tech companies. The most powerful people in the world. That is a huge responsibility. And I know they don't watch this stuff, but I know that when they go to bed at night in their giant million dollar sheets and beds and vacations and planes and jets and everything else, you got to know this. And if you believe what I believe, enjoy hell, enjoy it because you might have all the riches on earth here, but you can't take it with you when you're in hell because these people have, are like, are still humans. And I know it's on parents to protect their kids. But it's also on these people to not put predatory practices, to not put predatory pra practices in place that target children. Okay, I'm sorry. You should hung, you should have a millstone hung around your neck and be thrown out to sea. That's literally what the Bible says. And I know a lot of people don't believe me on that, and I understand that, but that's what I believe. Okay, and 
it, 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 it's, I, I don't, you never want to wish hell on anybody. I've always had this statement. I don't know where it came from when I was young. But if you could hold one man over the pit of hell, that man would change the world forever. That's how bad hell is going to be. Okay? And that's like where these people are going. Those people who refuse to protect their children, especially those who claim to be Christian while doing it, I, you got to know. It's like one of the most egregious things you could do to exploit and hurt children. I did this because for six years, that was my job to let them know of critical issues that affected the company. It's been two years since I left, and these are the conclusions I have come to. One, Meta knows the harm that kids experience on their platform. Yes, they do. And the executives know that their measures fail to address it. Yes, they do. Two, there are actionable steps that Meta could take to address the problem. This is a no-brainer. This is what pisses me off the most about this stuff. No-brainer. I got the solution for you. Maybe I'll do an entire video on it. Just like tech execs got it for you. I'm, I'm on pleb. I don't have any education in tech world. I'm not a code. Nothing. Easiest thing you could do. Just so easy. No kids on the platform until the 13. And even then, okay, whatever. I know the 13 is the magic number. Fine, keep it. But not even like you can't even put your kids on here. I don't care if they're your kids or not. Nope. If I see kids, it's gone. Just take the content off kids. No kids allowed. No kids on here. And all the parents are like, oh, but I want to teach how to change a diaper. Then do it on a doll. Okay? Do it with language. Do it with illustrations. Do it with AI. But, like, it's so easy to do. Just so easy. And it would be a flick of a dang switch. Two lines of code somewhere. So easy. Of course they won't. Senator Hawley's referred to cooking the books. I think what they did was bury this evidence, conceal it, yep. hide it, and deny it, in effect, to Congress and to the public. And then, in the past year, they've actually cut around 21,000 jobs, or a quarter of the global workforce, in what Mark Zuckerberg has called the year of efficiency. <laughs> Hundreds of jobs involving content moderators and safety jobs, including from Instagram's well-being team. Don't fire those people, okay? Boost those people. Give them more. So Facebook shouldn't be ever firing anybody about content moderation or letting go or laying off, whatever. That's the last line of defense for kids and they're just letting them go. Like the California is, the, is, a, is this was happening in California too with child laws and stuff like that. I, it's it's it, the more we talk about this, the more we see it. It's almost like it's being designed this way. Do you know what I mean? It's almost like this is on purpose. I know I'm a tinfoil hat wearer right now, but is there any other way you can put this? Why the attack on children in so many different ways? Identity, social media, you know, trying to turn them into something they're not, giving them things that they shouldn't be having, giving them books they shouldn't be reading in schools and things like that. Like, what is going on here? It is by design. There's no other way to put this, guys. I don't know how, to, like, do you, does anybody else believe this is all coincidence? That it's all happening right now? <laughs> Pedophiles have long used the internet, but unlike the forums and file transfer services that cater to people who have an interest in illicit content, Instagram doesn't merely host these activities. Instagram's algorithms promote them. Yes, they do. Yes, Instagram they do. Instagram connects pedophiles and guides them to content sellers via recommendation systems that excel at linking those who share these interests, the journal and academic researchers. So if you don't understand what he's talking about here at the algorithm, the algorithm is like the god of social media, okay? The algorithm is the hammer. It is the suggester. It is the everything. Algorithms are mathematical equations that say, hey, look, I really like looking at comedic posts from comedians. Oh, you like that? I noticed that you watched a couple and you watched them till the end. Here's some more of that. If you're looking at posts about really cool shoes and you really like that content, oh, you better believe the algorithm's like, you like that? <laughs> Here's some more of that. There you go. And you appreciate it because you're like, this is content I like, right? Sometimes you get trapped in an algorithm and you're like, well, how did I get in this algorithm about like Real Housewives of New Jersey? How did I get here? Right? Sometimes you get trapped in one. You're like, what the heck? Right? But then sometimes, but the algorithm also serves chomos and plutos. Okay? So if a chomo and pluto is looking at children's content, the algorithm is going to give him that 
every single time and feed it to him on a silver platter. But it doesn't get to the platter without the parent. You understand? Now, Mama Charlie did a video the other day and I asked her. She doesn't name names. Okay, it's her thing and I, I respect it. Okay, I understand why she doesn't do it. She's protecting herself, her platform, because TikTok does not do well when you name names. I promise you that. She would get booted off instantly if she ever named names. Okay, that's not the only reason she does that. She just, she feels that she, you know, she feels that naming names isn't really effective. Okay, I have, I respect it. I don't agree with it. Okay, at the same time, she did a video about how these family Instagrammers are putting pictures of their kids in their own Instagrams and then they're putting them behind a paywall so you can pay extra for exclusive content of children. Now, I cannot find them because obviously by her standards, she will not share those things and I, again, I respect it. But if I do find them, I will name and shame. I know people are like, well, you're gonna bring more people to their content. Sometimes social pressure is what helps. I did a, I did a short video on on my Instagram on uh, what's a women something I don't know Cosmo women or something like that about Everly LeBrant. I did a short video. They took it down. They took the post down. I'm not saying that's going to happen all the time, but unfortunately, as a necessary evil to cover these things, maybe some people will go over there. But the majority of people who see the horrors of this, they'll help get it shut down too. Okay, without social pressures, these people won't. Nothing will be done about it. Right? If you're not targeting the person, they nobody knows. A lot of people are like, Josh, you exploit children on your channel. Like, I only cover children or something. Not their parents. Like, it's like I'm only talking about kids on here or something. It's so silly. But if I don't target them, if I don't talk about them, you won't know. If I don't show you what they're doing, you won't know. I mean, you could talk all day long about it, but you won't grow. It won't work. Unfortunately, we live in a world where it's like you got to see it to believe it. Take it or leave it. Okay? And it seems to be working for my platform as well. Okay, it gives me a larger voice. More people come to my channel, more people see my message. The end. Okay, and so if you know of these Instagrammers who have their children on their platforms behind paywalls, please send it to me because I will name and shame. Okay, and again, if you don't subscribe to Mom Uncharted on TikTok and YouTube, go ahead and do it. She's incredible. Okay, I completely respect her avenue and the way that she goes. And I'm not saying this to, to say that she's wrong. She's right. That's just her way of doing it but I have a way of doing it too. And so if you know who she's talking about, please reach out to me. Found. Why do you think this is happening? Why has Instagram become, in the words of the Wall Street Journal, a vast pedophile network? Why are people like your daughter, every time they get on Instagram, they're being bombarded with unwanted sexual advances, sexual content? Why is this happening? Before he goes, before he answers. And the reason why this is so effective for these guys is because there's so many teenage girls and underage girls out there. They can cast the net so wide, thousands if not millions of kids are on the social media platform, okay? They can cast their nets so wide that the failure rate should be 99.9%, .9%, I hope it is. But there's always that 0.1%. And that could be thousands of children who are getting sucked into these inappropriate relationships, being human trafficked, being blackmailed. Like, I'm telling you it happens because we have proof of it's happening. And so they can just cast their net as wide as they want. And everybody's like, well, I just ignore it. I don't care. Yes, but there's not. Some kids are going to fall into that. There are victims of this. There are real victims. It happens. My experience of that is that most of the resources, if close to all that they invest in this, go towards this very narrow definition of harm. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage anybody here, when you're looking at this issue, if you find an account that, seems to be a pedophile account selling things, try and act on it. Try and race it. See what the company does with that. They don't do anything. But see what we've, tr we've tried. happens if you like it or follow it, what you start getting recommended, and of all of the things that get surfaced by the systems, how many of them are they acting on? It's a fraction of a percent. Mm -hmm. So what, what your research found and what you elevated to leadership was at least in part that these automated systems were not catching the vast majority of, of this unwanted content out there. I mean, the sexual advances of, of this pedophile material, it, it simply doesn't begin to capture. Yet Facebook didn't shift more resources 
didn't change their process. And here's the thing that really gets me, and I'll end with this, Mr. Chairman. This case filed by my home state, Missouri versus Biden. Landmark First Amendment case in which two federal courts, federal district court and a federal court of appeals, have found that Facebook, among others, actively coordinated with the present administration to censor First Amendment protected speech. Not this garbage that is not protected by anything in our Constitution, but First Amendment protected speech. Here's what gets me. What the courts found, this is in the record, this is factual findings, is that Facebook devoted all kinds of resources and people, actual human people, to doing things like monitoring posts on COVID-19 vaccine efficacy. There's one example of a parent in my home state of Missouri who wanted to post something about a school board meeting. Facebook used human moderators to go and take down that post. That was important. That has to come down. We can't yep. have them posting yep. about school board meetings, for heaven's sake. But the things that your daughter experienced, the this this ring of pedophiles, rings plural, that Facebook just can't find the time for. Let me ask you a question, everybody. I know because this is a very political, politically divisive topic about the shutdowns and everything else. Okay. Do you think it's more important that Facebook spends their time disseminating political content that they don't like? Or is it more important to protect children? The vast majority of humans would say it's more important to protect children. The political stuff, hmm, it's important, but it's not that important. Not over children. But, and it's not just that the COVID stuff. It's like any political speech that they don't like that doesn't align with their values inside the company. And there, a lot of them are very, very far leftist values. I, I dare you to find me proof otherwise of that, okay? But that's what's going on. Instead, they should be putting all those things, all those human moderators, all that into this. And again, like Epstein Island, like Ep everything else going on in the world, they don't for a reason. Not allowed to say it, though. Well, I would just back up what Senator Graham said. Uh, if this becomes expensive to them to continue this outrageous conduct, uh, then they may pay closer attention. That's for sure. But that's the answer. You make it so that it's expensive. So their bottom line is affected. That's the only way corporations make change. Oh, it's going to affect our bottom line. We're going to lose more money than we'll gain. Cut it. That's the only corporations are here to make money, everybody. They're not here to be police, even though they do it. They're not here to like police content generally. They're here to make money. That's what they exist for. That's the only reason they exist. And so once we see the reality of that, once we are all on board for that, and you're right, Josh, that's all they exist for. That's where we live. Until their bottom line is affected, they will not make any changes. And so the only way to affect change in corporations is to either boycott or uh, affect them very, very big with lawsuits that affect their bottom line. That's going to, like, again, it has to affect, when I say affects the bottom line, it has to cost more to mitigate all that than what they are making on it. Does that make sense? So if they're like, if they're making $100 billion off children, but it's costing them $110 billion to fight lawsuits and, and all the fines and everything else, they are going to cut out the ability for children to be on the planet. That's it. That's, that's simple economics. It's the only thing that's going to work here. You have suggested here as well that we need a survey of young people as to their experience. You want to explain that? Yeah. The way that harm should be tracked on these products is you go up to teens and ask them, did you receive an unwanted sexual advance in the last seven days? And they are going to know. It doesn't matter what the message is. And then yep. what you can do to help that team is... Do me a favor. If you have a teenager on social media, ask them if they've received an unwanted advance in their DMs. Don't say, I want to see it. Just ask them. Because, you know, a lot of parents are like, privacy, want my kids. And I understand that. Um, but ask them, have you ever received anything inappropriate? And what did you do about it? And if <laughs> some of you probably don't want to ask, but some of you should be asking. Okay, because some of you might not even know the depths of how far some of those conversations or things have gone. If you are that out of touch and out of tune with what's going on in your child's life, you need to do better. Understand me? Because all the people, because most of the people have, who have children who have been victims of all the stuff, they had no idea. And they thought they were living a normal life, giving their kid the privacy they deserved, the autonomy they wanted, and blah, blah, blah. And they had no idea what was going on until it was too late. Do yourself a favor and catch it before it happens. And the measures that I talk about are not even expensive to implement. We were also briefed by the uh, DEA. It is expensive to implement because it will cost them hundreds of billions of dollars because that's how much they make off of children. So it's expensive. You can make people less lonely, can it not? It can do that. 
Um, but has the opposite effect, actually. I know people are like, well, I'm connected with people. Have you ever seen teenagers in high school? Do they look connected? Like they're connected through text messaging and like digital means, but there's no human interaction. It's not real human interaction, guys. It's always behind the screen and you're always someone different. Let's be real. You are someone different behind the screen. Or all my haters who like make fun of my looks would probably, you know, or all my haters who, who like hate on me would probably show themselves. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're more bold behind anonymous accounts. You're more bold behind the internet. That's how we, you know, it just happens. That's the way it is. You're a different person. So yes, it can make you happy. But in the end, I think that in the long term, you're actually not happy. Human interaction, actual human interaction is something that we crave as a, as a species. And we're not getting it now. We're not getting it nearly as, as much as we used to. You ever see those, those nostalgic posts on Instagram, which I'm in that algorithm, it's great. Um, but you see this like, remember this? And it's like a like Christmas one. It's like shows all these pictures from the 90s and stuff of school bus and there's like snow falling and kids are doing crafts. I know that stuff happens now, but we have that nostalgic hit. We didn't have social media back then. We all pine for the days of old, no matter what generation we're in. And we all say something like, I wish I would have known that was the glory days or those were the good days. Right? I don't think our kids are going to have that same type of nostalgic moment when they're older because they are literally attached to tablets 24 hours a day. Human interaction is the most of the way. Sports is important. That's like social clubs are super important. And parents are just allowing social media and tablets and Netflix to watch their children while they themselves are scrolling and addicted. And that's, guys, I make my living in social media. I understand. I'm not judging anybody for that. I'm just saying. This is the reality. Social media can deliver insight, can it not? It can. Um, social media, when used properly, can give voice to the timid, can it not? It mm -hmm. can. Social media can also spread hate, can it? It can. Uh, and... Mm -hmm. So can just being in person. Isn't it a fact that much of social media, not all, but much of social media has become a, a cesspool of snark? <laughs> what I can speak to. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what his meaning of snark is. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Let's skip down a bit. Uh, social media sells your data. 124. Let's go here. Probably an important moment here. Sells that data to companies who then use that information to promote their products. Isn't that correct? I'm not an expert in that domain. Well, that's what. That's how they make money, right? They make money through advertising. Yeah. Well, I was shocked to read an article here in the MIT Technology Review, which talks about it's shockingly easy to buy sensitive data about US military personnel. Wow. Um, Duke University did a study at the request of West Point and others and determined for as little as 12 cents per record that uh, data brokers would sell sensitive information on U.S. military members and veterans. So I shouldn't let U.S. military on social media. I'm sorry. I know it sucks. At the very least, remember in World War II, you weren't even able to write a letter home and they would have uh, propaganda about, hey, be careful what you write because the enemy could be watching, blah, blah, blah. Like, man, just maybe just have some... There's too many military influencers out there right now who are, like, trying to make money doing military and influencing, and you should just be, yeah, I'm sorry, you're in the military. That's a no should just be the rule if you say something this and that you're eligible to be in trouble for it you could hear it or have just a platform that says here's what you're allowed to say on the internet you're allowed to just be your normal self you're not allowed to expose what you're doing it's all private you have to sign this contract blah blah, blah. there's ways to do it i'm just saying uh, that's and china is basically buying it all does that would that surprise you again this is not an area where i am I have any expertise. I mean, I have expertise from the perspective of being a security professional and ensuring that the systems do what they're said to do, but I don't have expertise on how the data gets brokered. Well, I think it's pretty much common knowledge that that's, uh, that that's the case, that uh, this data accumulated by social media companies is then sold. Obviously, and, yes. Um, and that's the reason why when you go on Instagram or Facebook, you don't actually have to pay a subscription or a fee. And they've talked about if they couldn't recover that revenue from selling that data about me 
Chairman Blumenthal, uh, the ranking member Hawley and others, or your daughter, then they would have to charge a fee in order to make yep. this economical. But they don't do that because they can and say economical is like, OK, they make they're the richest platforms on planet Earth next to maybe few, like gas or oil. OK, like. They, it's not like, oh, we got to break even. <laughs> they're making hundreds and hundreds of billions and billions of dollars, okay? It's not like they're breaking even. They don't have to sell your data to make money. They don't. It's just more ways to make money. Sell your data. And as shocking as what you have discovered and you shared with us today about this one social media company, the truth is uh, this is not unique to Instagram or Facebook, correct? Correct. It's the entire social media sector that serves teams. And here in the Congress, we've talked a lot about our concern about China's increasing belligerency yep. mm -hmm. and militancy and buildup of its, not only its economy, but its military and threatening peace in Asia and elsewhere. But we also have talked a lot about uh, apps like TikTok, for example, or, that are Chinese applications that uh, then do much as Instagram does and, and vacuum up all this data, addict our children to uh, by, by using the algorithms or codes to figure out uh, what to recommend uh, to them. And again, this is all about the data and all about the money. Mm -hmm. And of course, Senator Durbin mentioned the use of uh, social media applications when it comes to selling drugs. Mm -hmm. You know, fentanyl, synthetic opioid, is the single leading cause of death for 18 to 45 year olds in America today. That's crazy. And much of it is is transacted That's those crazy. sales and, and promotions through the use of social media. And then there's other scary things like deep fakes. Uh, Listen you know what up. Deep fake is. I do. What is it? And it is when you use technology to create an image that appears to be a person, but it's not an actual video or uh, photograph of that person. And I've read in the last couple of days that uh, deep fakes are now being used to uh, basically portray um, young girls uh, for sexual, um, sexual gratification. This is happening, guys. I know I've talked about this, and maybe I should do an entire video about it again. Like, just, just basically that one topic. If your kids are on social media, and they are famous on social media, like take Everly LeBrant, for example, or Dr. Dozen Kids, or whatever the case may be, it is so easy for people to take their image and voice and everything they want, because you put it out there. Deep fake technology has become so easy to use that it is being used for that and sold for that. There are Reddit threads where they're selling deep fakes of people. Oh, you want a deep fake of this person who doesn't do nudes or doesn't do porn? I can make a porno with that person in it. Like people are like YouTubers. I forget the name of the girl. I, 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 Poke, is it Pokemane? I'm not sure if it was her or not. But basically discovered that her, her likeness is being used in deep fake pornography and it like wrecked her. That's without her consent. That's insanity, everybody. That is happening and is happening to these children. It is. They're already being followed by pre predators and pedophiles, right? And so when they take this content, they can just make whatever they want with it now. The technology's made it so they can make it whatever they want. And you give it to them. You give it to them. If a, And I know a lot of these parents don't actually understand it unless they see it. And I swear, if they actually saw it, they still wouldn't change anything. I know you thought I was going to say, oh, they'd take it down. Some of them would. Don't get me wrong. Some of them would be like, okay, this is it. I'm done. But most of them wouldn't. Most of them don't care. <laughs> I cannot believe that this exists. And that parents are just like, yeah, well, well, it's the risk we're willing to take. So there's a lot in this video. And I mean, ho hopefully I remember to like tag it below so you can go watch the full thing. But that's it, everybody. That's like the just that that's what kind of the gist of this whole thing. And it's not getting out to the public because people don't care about politics. Not really. Mainstream is politics become more mainstream as they ever have before. Yes. But this type of stuff. Yeah. Eh, there's wars and stuff going on. I get that. And there is bigger and there is things going on. But I know that this is going to probably ruffle a couple of feathers when I say this. This is the most important issue that's going to affect the future of our population, of our people, of our society. It is way more important than anything that's going on in the world right now. Way more important. Because this is the next generation of people that are going to take over leadership positions. They're going to be the next plumbers, the next scholars, the next philosophers. 
and we are literally putting them in a den of, of freaking snakes all day long, every day. And for those of you out there who have been abused or have had something happen to you or you were abused when you're young or whatever the case may be, you know how dangerous it is for your future, that how this will affect you for the rest of your life. These kids that are going through, a lot of it has to do with, uh, uh, you will never know because shame is a very, very powerful thing. And that's what these predators will use for these kids. They'll put shame on it or they'll threaten to release something. And so many kids won't come forward because they're so scared of that coming forward. We are, again, if you're a good parent, you don't put your kids on social media because you know it's dangerous. One in four are not the kind of odds you want to go up against when it comes to your children, okay? If, you're ch if your child had a one in four chance of dying when they left the house, would you ever let them leave the house? No, you wouldn't. One in four? If you had one in four chance of winning the lottery, how many lottery tickets would you buy? One in four is a massive number of children being affected online. That should be all you need to hear. Here's a couple questions you ask yourself. Do you believe the internet is dangerous for children? If you answer no, you're wrong. Okay, two. Is it your job to protect your, your child? Yes. There's a, it's a no-brainer, everybody. No-brainer. I don't care what your kid wants. I don't care how much pressure your kid puts on you. You're the parent. And so many of us have capitulated to our children's wants and needs. And you're like, yeah, you're right. You're right, you're right, you're right. Or you don't know. Or you're just uneducated about what's on social media. And you're just not willing to learn, which is also stupid of you. You should be willing to learn. Okay? Don't be so dumb, okay? Get your kids off the internet. I don't care how much they hate you. They will thank you when they're older, I promise you. And if your kid is so far entrenched into the internet and social media right now, you're gonna need some help, some therapy. You're gonna do it. You're gonna need it because it is a, it is a drug, okay? You need to, at all costs right now, stop and prevent your kids from being on social media at all costs. It's like giving them fentanyl. Would you really... Here's another question you asked. Would you give your kid crack cocaine? Would you? You wouldn't, would you? This is like that, okay? And all the studies prove it. So just stop it. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Everybody, take a deep breath. <sighs> these videos are really important. I hope you watch them. I hope you share these ones. Very, very, very important that this is going on. And the rules are gonna be changed Laws are going to be made, but it's not happening fast enough. But what you can do in the meantime is starve these platforms of your children of the content. Okay? Don't give them that. They want it really badly. That's why they won't change anything about it. They don't want to change it because it makes them too much money. Make it cost them money, then they'll change it. Yeah? Cool. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being amazing. You know you are awesome. Protect your children. Okay? And they will thank you in the end. I promise you that. Love your kids more than loving yourself. I know that sounds to a lot of people. Eh, do it. You should love your kids more than you love yourself. Okay? And I will see you when I see you.